Hello, I'd like to welcome you to A Healthier You. I'm Larry Macon, Jr., pastor in Mount Zion, Oakwood Village. I'm also the co-host on the show, It's About You, on WKYC Channel 3, where weekly we recognize people in our community that are doing great things. We call them everyday champions. However, uh, this web series is about your health. It's about you, especially during the pandemic. You know, as a leader in the community, I felt compelled to make sure that we get the latest information out to the community in all areas of health. And I'm pleased today to be partnering with the university hospitals to spread the word in our community about how you can live a healthier life. Today, I'm speaking with Dr. Sheree Phillips. Uh, she's a vascular surgeon at the university hospitals. And so we're going to talk about, again, you building a healthier you. So Dr. Phillips, I'm so uh, thankful that you're on with us today. Thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. And so I just want to ask you, what is a vascular surgeon? So a vascular surgeon is a physician who treats all types of vascular diseases, meaning uh, conditions or ailments that affect the arteries and the veins. Mm -hmm. um, and not only do we treat them as surgeons, meaning perform, performing different procedures and uh, surgeries, but we also manage them medically because many of these or many of these conditions can be chronic. Um, so mm -hmm. we follow them um, throughout their course. Wow, so is there a difference between a vascular surgeon and a cardiologist? Some people kind of get those mixed up sometimes. Yeah, sometimes they do um, because there are some cardiologists who, you know, um, do things similar to the heart cath um, uh, in, you know, an area of either the belly or the legs, mm -hmm. uh, similar to what vascular surgeons do. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's called either an angiogram or angioplasty, or sometimes they even place stents in the arteries of the legs. Vascular surgeons do that as well. Wow. Um, but we can also uh, treat those, those uh, arteries and veins in other ways. Sometimes doing just the angioplasty or the stenting uh, may not be enough, and patients may need to either go on to surgery or different types of treatment. As vascular surgeons, not only can we do the angiograms, mm -hmm. uh, but if patients need any type of actual open surgery mm -hmm. uh, where we need to put incisions on the leg or do mm -hmm. bypasses on the, on the arteries, in the leg, uh, we can also do that as well. Wow, are there so are there any specific like main conditions that you that you generally deal with? Uh, so some of the more common ones uh, that we uh, see patients for, um, you know, looking at the arteries are mm -hmm. something called peripheral arterial disease. Uh, that is a disease that affects the arteries and the legs, causing them to narrow. Um, it's what we call an atherosclerotic process where plaque builds up inside the arteries mm -hmm. and over time can cause them to narrow. It's the same type of process that happens in the coronary arteries and the heart that mm -hmm. requires stenting sometimes. Mm -hmm. um, the same process that also uh, occurs in what's called the carotid artery in your neck that can lead to stroke, mm -hmm. uh, which is another uh, ailment that we treat. Um, we treat um, aneurysms, aneurysms that may occur in the artery in the belly or in the legs or, or wherever they may be. Uh, not only do we treat these arterial diseases, but we also treat uh, venous diseases. Mm -hmm. um, so if patients have uh, swelling in their legs or varicose veins, spider veins, um, any of those types of uh, venous problems vascular mm -hmm. surgeons treat as well. In addition, one other kind of main category of uh, conditions that we treat um, in, in kind of an indirect way uh, are patients who are on dialysis. Uh, we create, uh, you know, dialysis access for them, so either a fistula or a graft that patients can use for their dialysis treatments. Not only do we create them, we also manage them over time so that so make sure that they remain fully functional um, during the course of you know a, a patient's time on dialysis. Wow! So you don't have to do surgery at all times. You actually can just treat people for a lot of conditions. Yes, that is true. Um, mm -hmm. So with many of the uh, conditions that I previously mentioned. 
um, peripheral arterial disease in the legs, um, a lot of different types of aneurysms, mm -hmm. um, carotid artery disease. Uh, many times, you know, if they're kind of milder or we can kind of catch them in the, the earlier stages, mm -hmm. many times they can be managed with certain medications and lifestyle changes and just monitoring them over time. Um, you know, we, we like to say it's kind of important uh, for patients to actually be screened and seen early by their vascular surgeon uh, for these types of ailments because sometimes it can help to prevent complications down the road. Um, many times with, you know, atherosclerotic disease, uh, meaning patients who have peripheral arterial disease, uh, meaning the blockages in the arteries in the leg, or the blockages in the arteries in your carotid artery, we can use certain medications that can kind of help to slow down the buildup of that plaque. We can talk about different lifestyle changes, such as dietary habits, exercise, quitting smoking, if that's an issue for the patient, um, so that they may not necessarily have to have any type of surgeries or procedures right away. Well, that's good to know that, you know, your lifestyle uh, can play a big part in it because you can always change that, you know, especially early on. Um, I think that's very good hope for those that are watching right now. Um, but we also hear the term called PAD, a P-A-D. Tell us a little bit about mm -hmm. that. So uh, peripheral arterial disease, again, it's an atherosclerotic process where plaque builds up inside the artery over time. Mm -hmm. um, it's very common in patients or I should say more so, um, some of the risk factors for this disease uh, developing uh, in a person uh, are patients who are smokers mm. or who have diabetes, uh, patients with high blood pressure or uncontrolled uh, cholesterol. Mm. Um, you know, these are all things that, that can lead to this process. Okay. Um, you know, the actual process and the reason that we call it peripheral arterial disease is because it's occurring in those kind of uh, arteries that are lower down, like in your legs, uh, mm -hmm. in your feet. Um, and, you know, again, as we talked about in terms of treatment, um, sometimes when we catch this early, we can treat it, we can manage it with medication and mm -hmm. lifestyle changes. No, that's good. I, I would imagine that cholesterol and diabetes management can play a role in this also. Uh, would yes. you agree with that, doctor? Yeah, so um, one of the main um, kind of management uh, objectives for uh, peripheral arterial disease or any atherosclerotic process is uh, controlling cholesterol. Mm -hmm. uh, cholesterol is one of the major components uh, of plaque, the plaque that builds up inside the artery to cause these blockages. Mm -hmm. uh, and many times once we can get the cholesterol under control and specifically with a certain medication called a statin medication, mm -hmm. um, that can help to lower the cholesterol. It's also been proven in multiple studies to help reduce um, or, or slow down the rate of growth uh, of the plaque buildup inside. And even in some more recent studies, it has been uh, seen that it may actually reverse the amount of plaque uh, inside uh -huh. the artery. Um, so, uh -huh. so managing the cholesterol can be very important. Oh, that's great. Um, are, are, mm -hmm. are there some symptoms that people should be looking out for right now to know if they're having some issues uh, in this vascular area? So yes, there is. Um, so in terms of symptoms for uh, peripheral arterial disease, one of the first symptoms that a patient might notice uh, is that their legs may seem to kind of tire out or get crampy after they've walked a certain distance. Um, they may, you know, some patients describe it in different ways. It can be achy, it can just be, they may feel like their legs are going to give out. This could occur in the calves or in the thighs, just depending on kind of exactly where the blockage is occurring in the arteries. Um, some other symptoms may be that, you know, if the, if the disease is kind of a little bit more severe, they might get pain in the, the lower legs or the feet at nighttime. Yeah. Um, and this kind of all is kind of stemming from uh, that inability to kind of get the blood where it needs to go. Mm -hmm. um, one of the, for this? oh, sorry, I'm, go ahead. I'm sorry, is there any testing <laughs> for this? I'm, I'm really interested. Is, is it blood oh. test? Is it, you know? 
Yeah, so there there are some testing, not necessarily blood tests, um, okay. but there are more of some imaging studies that can be okay. done. Okay. Um, so if I were uh, to see a patient in my office and they, they you know, kind of uh, uh, describe to me any of the symptoms that I mentioned, mm. um, some of the tests that I might send them for uh, is one is called a Doppler test. Okay. Uh, that test is a test that we check to see how much blood flow is getting down the legs and to the feet. Mm -hmm. um, it involves kind of a, a, an ultra a ultrasound type system mm -hmm. um, that basically checks blood at different levels of the legs and the feet. Okay. Another uh, study is an actual ultrasound test uh, mm -hmm. that can take a look and see whether or not there's actually any plaque or blockage uh, inside the artery. So how do we treat people with these conditions? Uh, so there are uh, basically kind of three main pathways of treatment mm -hmm. uh, for peripheral arterial disease. Uh, the first, and for patients who have kind of milder symptoms or, you know, just are kind of limited to maybe the symptoms when they walk, especially if they're still able to walk a decent distance, uh, we may try with just medical management. Mm -hmm. So that would include, you know, those statin medications that we talked about to control the cholesterol, um, you know, uh, ha developing a, a healthy uh, eating habits to help also uh, lower cholesterol. Uh, and also a daily exercise, and that could just be walking, you know, for 30 to 45 minutes a day. Okay. Um, and, and, you know, like I said, many patients uh, are, are smokers that have this, so sometimes if that is an issue, um, trying to help them to quit smoking as well. Yeah. Um, the second pathway would be those angiogram procedures that we mentioned earlier. Mm -hmm. Not only do the angiograms take a, a good look at the arteries and can tell us specifically where the blockages are, mm -hmm. uh, but depending on exactly where those blockages are, many times we can do certain interventions such as uh, balloon angioplasty or stretching the artery open mm -hmm. or placing a stent in that artery to open up the arteries further to allow the blood flow to get through the artery that was previously blocked. Um, the, the third pathway would be, you know, if, if we're unable to so open it up with the, the angioplasty or the stenting, would be to actually do an open uh, surgical procedure, such as a bypass or just cleaning out the plaque within the artery. Wow. So there's hope, and, and that's what I'd love to provide to the community. It seems like, uh, Dr. Phillips, there's been so many technological advances in this field. Uh, that there's hope. So if you can just, as we end up our conversation, just tell us what is the hope in, in treatment for these uh, ailments? Uh, so the hope in treatment is to uh, allow patients to have uh, the lifestyle that they want. Mm -hmm. uh, many times with these conditions, um, you know, they're not necessarily life-threatening until sometimes maybe the later stages, but they can really affect a patient's quality of life, yeah. uh, how much they're able to really move around and go about their day. Mm -hmm. uh, so if I can help a patient to be able to, you know, uh, you know, do their gro grocery shopping because now their their legs feel better and they can walk around the grocery store mm -hmm. or go to the park or do the exercises that they want to do or be able to go on vacation and know that they can you know go go walking and things like that um, without worrying about their legs hurting mm -hmm. um, that you know th that is really what my goal is to really right. improve patients quality of life Okay, well, I appreciate that. I, I think I've got all the information that I need. And, and so, Dr. Phillips, I want to thank you uh, for expanding our knowledge and sharing with us what University Hospitals is doing to help people become a healthier you. And, and I, I want to also thank our viewers that are watching right now. And so that'll be our segment for this week. But keep tuning in on social media as we continue to touch on topics and bring resources to the community. Be sure to contact me on social media or visit my website at LarryMakingJr.com or further information regarding any health concerns can be made by contacting university hospitals and just schedule a visit. And don't forget, good health is wealth. Thank you again, Dr. Phillips, for being on this segment. Thank you. Thank you Thanks. very much.